Hi, in this tutorial we're going to demonstrate uh, CPAC 8, which is titled Determine the Wavelength for, of Light from a Laser or Other Light Source Using a Diffraction Grating. This is going to allow us to demonstrate use of a laser light source to investigate characteristics such as interference and diffraction, and allow us to demonstrate the ability to use that safely and take measurements accurately from it. Here we have the bench laser, it's powered from mains. We have a switch and a key in the back to power it. The key allows us to control uh, the access to make sure that nobody who isn't trained with appropriate use of the laser is able to access and turn it on. The laser is marked with its power. So here we can see the laser is marked as a class 2 laser and marked with instructions not to stare into the beam. So while using this laser, we need to make sure that at no point are we stood in front of the laser and staring into the beam with it pointing in our eye. The class 2 means that if we do accidentally get it into our eye, then our blink reflex should allow us to keep ourselves protected before any permanent damage is caused. If we were using a more powerful laser, then we would need to take um, more proactive steps to ensure our safety such as putting filtered lenses in front of our eyes, taking care around specular reflections, i.e. reflections of the laser, as they may also be powerful enough to cause damage. However, with this class of laser used in the laboratory, we should be reasonably safe as long as we take care to make sure the beam doesn't enter anybody's eyes directly. For this setup, we're projecting the beam along a long distance, which will allow us to increase the separation between bright spots uh, on our screen. Here we have the beam set up on the far side of the lab and we're going to project it across, in this case, onto the whiteboard. Here we've got no diffraction gratings in front of the laser and so we can see a single bright spot projected onto the screen. Here we can see why a uh, bench pulley ramp thing uh, was used in order to raise the laser above the uh, tabletop to make sure that on meeting the board it doesn't interfere uh, by having collided with any taps or any uh, laptop furniture and is positioned uh, so that we're not at the bottom of the screen uh, making it hard to take any measurements. To generate the diffraction pattern we're going to project the laser through a diffraction grating. Here I've used a clamp stand and boss to hold a holder and within that we can insert the diffraction grating. Here I've got one set at 80 lines per millimetre and by using various other values including 100 and 300 lines per millimetre we'll be able to get a variety of data from which we can take the average. You may just about be able to see a small red spot there which is the reflection of the laser off of the glass surface of the diffraction. This is where if we were using a more powerful laser we need to take care because those sorts of reflections could cause damage. But here, with the laser we're using, we're safe uh, without any additional protection. Now we're ready to start taking some measurements. The first measurement we're going to take is the distance from the diffraction grating to the screen on which we're projecting our pattern. Note that we are measuring from the surface of the diffraction grating, not from the source of the laser. So as we have it set up, there's a few centimetres between where the laser emits from the uh, laser to where the diffraction grating is. And we need to make sure we're measuring from there. Because we're going across the lab, I've got a long tape measure rather than a simple ruler. The other end I've got stuck in an appropriate place uh, using some duct tape, but you of course can use a classmate or your tutor to help you hold that in place. Using this, I can stretch it out and measure the distance to where the central laser spot is projected onto the screen over here. Note that I've not currently actually got a diffraction grating in place, so I'm measuring to where the holder is. So this gives me a single spot projected onto the screen, which makes it nice and easy to measure. I'm making sure that I'm not accidentally measuring the distance to one of the other bright spots that would be appearing. And this, I can see, is giving me about 4 metres, 58 centimetres. Uh, this is going to be accurate using this tape measure to within one or two centimetres. We've got an issue that the tape measure only measures to the nearest centimetre, and you may also notice that there's a little slack here. 
I could try and pull it tauter and that would help relieve, uh, release that issue as well. But there's a little bit of uncertainty at the other place in terms of trying to make sure that I've got the other end of the tape exactly where the diffraction grating is and some uncertainty here. So all in all we're probably looking at sort of plus minus one, two centimetres as the uncertainty in this measurement. Now I've inserted the 80 lines per millimetre diffraction grating into the holder and as a result on the screen we can see a diffraction pattern has formed. I've dimmed the settings on the camera a little bit which brings out the spots a bit better. Even better I could draw the blinds and that would make them more apparent but makes it hard for the camera to see. So we can see a central bright spot here and we can see we've got two additional maxima on either side. If you look carefully I don't know whether the camera will be able to pick up. We've got an additional spot here, and we've got an additional spot here. We've got an additional spot here, and can't quite make that one out. So we can see we've got the diffraction pattern, which has formed um, and is spreading out. What we now need to do is measure the separation between these spots. Before we do start taking measurements, it's worth taking a closer look at the bright spots which we've got projected on the board. Here I've zoomed in a bit closer to the central maxima and with a 30 centimetre ruler placed against it you can see that the spots are actually fairly large. This is maybe a little in excess of half a centimetre across in the diameter of this bright spot and that's going to limit the precision with which we can take our measurement. Here I've got the camera set up pointing at two of the bright spots and with this and a larger ruler we can take a measurement. So here I've got a metre rule by placing that against the screen, I can measure the separation between the central maxima and the first order maxima to be approximately 23 and a half centimetres. Now with an uncertainty of about five millimetres, that's going to give us potentially quite a poor accuracy. We've got about 5, 0.5 parts in 25. Um, do some maths. Um, so we can improve that by instead of measuring just across two maxima, we can measure across multiple maxima and divide it by however many maxima we've divided across. Now you may also have noticed that I was getting in the way a little bit. So here in front of these bright spots, uh, trying to take the measurements, I'm getting in the way. So to try and improve that, what I'm going to do is use a board marker to make a mark on this. Or if you've got a paper screen, uh, you can use a bit of pencil or a pen or something. And so I can put a little mark at the centre of each of these bright spots and that way I'll still be able to make the measurements even if I'm getting in the way of the light while I'm trying to take the measurements. I can see this one and I can see this one. So here we've been able to pick out instead of just n equals 1 we'll be able to do n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the uncertainty should be reduced to about a fifth of what it originally was. Now with my meter rule we can take the measurement. We can see here that actually the separation between the first and the last spot which I measured out is greater than a meter. So I could use the tape uh, but that was only able to measure down to uh, about one centimeter. So it's going to be preferable to use this so that we can measure down to a millimetre. So instead of measuring across n equals 5, I'm going to measure across n equals 4. That will still give us a significant improvement in the precision of our measurement. And so doing that, I can read this value to be about 93 and well, uh, 94 centimetres. And that will be plus or minus half a centimetre with the uncertainty of the ruler and with the uncertainty in the width of the spots. We can now repeat this with the other diffraction grating settings. Here I've replaced the 80 line per millimetre diffraction grating with a 100 line per millimetre diffraction grating. Here we have the central bright spot maxima in the same place. But you may be able to see, if we compare it to the spot we had from the previous time, uh, this is where the first maxima is now which is further away. So a finer diffraction grating, one with more lines per millimetre, one with a smaller separation between the grid, will have a broader diffraction grating. We can now take measurements off of this again. What we don't need to remeasure is the distance from the screen to the diffraction grating as that hasn't changed. So we won't need to remeasure that. 
we'll just be measuring a new set of values to get the separation between these spots. So now we're ready to work through the analysis of our results. So here, this is the equation which we're basing it off of. This is the equation which describes the diffraction of light through a grating. We've got n lambda is d sine theta. We're ultimately after to determine the wavelength of the light, and so I've rearranged that for lambda is d sine theta over n. Down here, I've got a little diagram of the setup which will help us identify where each of these variables are represented within our experiment and our measurements. So here we've got the laser light in black, instant upon our diffraction grating in red, which causes it to uh, diffract, interfere and form our pattern on our screen in blue. So the D is the separation between the slits in the diffraction grating. So where we've got 80 lines per millimetre, D won't be 80, it will be 1 80th of a millimetre. That's the separation between each of the lines in the diffraction grating. Lambda is the wavelength of the light which we've got coming in. Uh, N represents the order of the maxima, so we've got a central bright spot. We have then additional bright spots either side, and we'd have additional ones further out. So if I'm going between adjacent bright spots, N will equal to 1. If I'm going between this one and this one, for example, that would give me n equal 2. So when we took our measurements earlier, we were measuring between multiple bright spots, and that will correspond to our value of n. We've also got theta, which describes the angle between the central maxima and the first maxima, or more generally, depending on the value of n, the angle between the bright spots that we're measuring. Note that we did not directly measure theta. Instead, we measured the distance from the diffraction grating to the screen, and we also measured the distance between the spots. So if we look at this, we've got a nice triangle, and so we can find theta by doing inverse tan of opposite over adjacent, where the opposite is going to be the separation between the maxima, and the adjacent is going to be the distance from the diffraction grating to the screen. Here I've got a small table set up to help me uh, work through the calculations which are required. So in the first column I've got uh, just a label to identify which diffraction grating I was using, the 80, the 100 and the 300 millimetre. In the next column we've got the value of D, that's the separation between them. We can see I've identified that D is obtained by doing 1 millimetre divided by the value, either 80, 100 or 300 and that gives me these values. So we've got 1.25 times 10 to the minus 5 millimetres 10 to the minus 5 millimetres, and 3.33 times 10 to the minus 6 millimetres. In the next column, I've got the value of n. Um, so here we're using different values because each time I would measure as many as I could fit on my metre rule. So with the first one, which was illustrated in the video, uh, we were able to measure uh, with a value of n equals 4. For the next one, 100 lines per millimeter, remember we said that a finer grating gives us a broader pattern, and so I was only able to measure uh, across n equals 3. For the final one, 300 lines per millimeter, much broader spacing, so I was only able to measure between adjacent maxima, uh, so n equals 1. In the next column, we've got the value of theta. Um, you can't see the raw values I've got, but you'll have those from uh, the first one up here as illustrated earlier. So in each case, what we've done is we've taken the opposite over adjacent tan inverse of that, and that gives us our theta values, which are generally about 10, 10 degrees in this case. Um, so the opposite being the separation between the braxima and the adjacent being the separation between the diffraction grating and the uh, screen. Uh, then in the final column, I've got the actual values of lambda. Uh, so this I've then put into the equation, which we can see here, uh, just about. So uh, lambda is d sine theta over n. So it's d times sine of theta, divide by n, and outputs my value of lambda. I've quoted these in nanometers, so this is actually 6.28 times 10 to the minus 7, but that comes out as 628 nanometers. The next one gave me 629, very close, nice, and the last one 639. Still reasonably close, but looks a little bit further apart compared to the separation between the other two values. So if I was inclined, I might go back and remeasure that, and that would help me uh, be a bit more confident in my values, maybe.
So now we've gone through the analysis and we've got a value for our lambdas. Uh, we can now do a little bit of finishing off so that we can get an uncertainty which we can quote with that. So here I've got my raw value 628, 629 and 639 and from those the first, things I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is determine a mean which comes out as 632. Next I want to find the range in those values that's the difference between the highest and the lowest value, so 639 plus 628 gives me a range of 11 in this mean. Now that I know the mean and the range, I can use that to find an estimate of the uncertainty in the mean. I first do that by estimating the uncertainty in a single measurement, which is given by half the range. So we can make an estimate of the uncertainty in a single measurement from this data uh, by doing half the range, so half of 11 gives us 4.5. Using that, we can then find an uncertainty in the mean value which is being quoted, um, and that's done by the uncertainty in the measurement, this delta x is what we're using to represent that, divided by root n, where n is the number of values which have been used to find this mean. So in this case, we've got three values which we've taken the average of to find our final answer, so n is going to be equal to 3. So to find the uncertainty in the mean, we're going to do 4.5 divided by root 3, and that gives us 2.6. Now we only need to quote an uncertainty to one significant figure, and so that's going to be plus or minus 3. So our final answer, what is the wavelength of the light coming from this laser using this diffraction method, is going to be 632 plus or minus 3 nanometers using the data which we obtained in this case.